For a panel we had, I mentioned the word science doesn't stand still, remember? Meaning that, you know, it, things move on. And it certainly moved on, as far as I'm concerned, in the tree world since the 1980s. In the 1980s, two people called Alan Rayner and Lynn Boddy, two scientists, actually looked a lot at the relationship between fungi and trees. And actually, it's mind-blowing because every piece of wood that you find from day one is packed with fungi. They're either in what we call the long living wood, because Mrs. Satcher got rid of me, and I then went to work on marketing dead wood. And I thought, hang on, Satcher called me dead wood. By the way, I've got, I've got her on video crying, because only what he wants to watch it. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so I changed the word, I actually changed the word to decaying wood, because basically decaying wood means fertiliser. <coughs> so this to me is what I call, uh, not um, leaf litter and small twigs are a year old, if you like, um, release fertiliser. Then you get up, this will be two or three years. Then you get further up and when a big limb comes off, we're talking about slow release fertiliser. But at the same time, if we think about that every piece of wood you look at is actually full of fungi. They may be sleeping, we call them latent fungi, or they may be active. Recently they've looked at one single living pine needle and they've isolated 50 different species of fungi in one single pine needle. That tree is just a column of millions and millions of uh, fungi, either sleeping or active. Now, you, you, you can split trees into two. You can split trees into trees with heartwood and trees with what we call ripe wood. Now, heartwood, as the tree expands, the uh, growth rings, some of the growth <laughs> rings die annually, and you get a distinct growth ring which becomes heartwood. When you come to trees which have ripe wood, now the heartwood trees basically are yew, sweet chestnut and oak. All the rest come into the ripe wood bracket, like beech and all the rest of it, and this particular one. So, but what they do is the, the, the inner rings die with age, but it's a phase. It phases in. It's not a regular, a regular pattern. And as you can see, almost certainly this tree has been damaged by animals, and where it's damaged by animals, that column going up into here will have what we call dysfunctional wood in the ripe wood. So you start to get non-living wood extending into what would be normally living wood. Presumably, I mean, no disrespect, because of damage from animals usually, or gang mowers is the big one. So when I see this, what I'm seeing is a fungus which can never, ever, ever pass into living wood. And this is where we are today. We must recognise that this thing is co-evolved with the tree. That thing is actually living on non-living wood in the tree. So I'm not saying it's not telling you something. It's telling you something that's happening to that tree. But it's not the reason for the non-living wood. The non-living wood is something out here. It's probably to do with compaction. It's probably to do with high fertiliser. This tells me animal concentration defecation of all the pesticides and as you know pharmaceutical products in animals or veterinary products are not tested against the environment so look at that line that's been dumped with chemicals and no disrespect one because that's where the animals concentrate and these are telling you that so possibly under here we've got dead roots dead roots mean dysfunctional wood where there shouldn't be dysfunctional wood so here You've got two great big buttress roots, which are really going to town, but where they're joining up, you've got, an, um, you've got wood going right into the centre, because of the, it's called inclusion, and that gives the mushroom inside, which is decaying down naturally, the non-living wood, right? But it's now got an exit point. So somewhere in there, there's a mushroom busy. And because it's got an exit point, it fruits. What's interesting in this tree, 
is this is what we call the white rock decayer. Well, look at that big limb up there. It's red rock or brown rock. So there's another mushroom in the tree decaying out non-living wood. There are very, very few fungi that actually can get into living wood. And I even dispute honey fungus. But that's where we are today.